enjoyable at so many levels. It was poignant, it was thought provoking. But as you well know, part of being an artist is asking, trying to grapple with some of the difficult questions in life. So I, who am clearly not Iranian, was sitting through the movie and I was thinking to myself how intrepid those three young women were and worrying about their future given the way they had exposed themselves and thinking if in any way that was ever shown in Iran, they would be in a heck of a lot of trouble. So I'm, I guess I have to ask you with all due respect, how could you have not realized that with, by showing the trailer in Iran or by exposing them that they would, you, you'd not be putting them in a great deal of peril? Right. It, it, it's a totally valid question. I don't, um, I don't disagree with you, but when we talked to them about it and showed them the trailer and said, this will go online, this might go viral, are you okay with it? They enthusiastically said yes. And when all the shit went down with that website and everybody got freaked out, we went to each of them and showed them the film, the whole film, and said, we can blur you out, we can cut out some of the things you want cut out, just tell us what you want. And they said, leave it. You know, each of them said, this is our way of saying, you know, we just, this is us being honest, so we want people to be able to see it. So what do you do then? I mean, I sort of turned the question to you a little bit, like what, we want to be able to show them, because they're not, remarkable women. They're normal women in Iran, right? But they're remarkable in that they let us do it. But the fact that that's just how they are, and, and why should we, why can't we find a way to show that to the rest of the world? I mean, that's kind of where we, that was our position. It's like, and every Iranian filmmaker struggles with censorship, and we're not there. You know, we don't live there, so we don't have to struggle with that censorship. And if those girls are giving us a chance, then I felt like we had to show it. I hope that's the answer. So in addition to this, uh, the film breaks a lot of the rules that I know of, at least, that the Ministry of Culture and Guidance, whatever it's called, says for filmmakers, including the uh, some of the suggested behavior of one of the basketball players, right the alcohol, so on and so forth. Uh, what was the thought process in sorting these out as to what you're going to actually <coughs> ultimately include in the film and what yeah. was not? Well, first of all, there was no, we didn't get any um, uh, legal permission to make the film from any ministry or cultural organization in Iran. So that was the first thing. It was all kind of done undercover. Um, originally, we were going to um, get <coughs> journalist visas and try to go there and shoot it, you know, totally uh, honestly and with permits because we were going to do it with HBO Real Sports here in the States. Um, and then they, at first, were going to grant us the visas, the journalist visas. And six months later, out of the blue, the guy from the mission in New York called me up and said, and I'll say it in Farsi first, Il projet chômant a chalé. This project of yours is garbage. Just throw it out. Don't even think about it. You should just forget trying to make this film. So we were like, let's make the film. <laughs> what else are you going to do at that, you know? So, and, and we were supposed to go together, my husband and I. My husband is a German US citizen, so he has a German passport. I have an Iranian passport, but I don't have this new public ID card. And they said that if you don't have the public ID card, you can't leave the country. You can go there, but you can't leave. And we had a one-year-old daughter at that time, and I just didn't feel like taking that risk. And so Till went on his own with his German passport, and you just swipe in, you get an express visa, you get it for two weeks, you can extend it for two weeks. And that's how, and we got permission from the arena and from the basketball club, and obviously all the people that are in the film. Um, and the rest, so, so then Till went uh, a number of other times, and on the last time he went, they swiped his passport in Iran and said, the uh, blacklist and sent him back, detained him for 24 hours and then sent him back the next day. We are no longer allowed to go into Europe. So when you make a documentary, you sort of shoot whatever you have, you know, whatever is happening. 
you know, you're not, you can't really choose. And then in the editing room, you find out what makes a good story. So some of these things that are not necessarily allowed, I mean, in Brooklyn, in New York, you're not, we didn't want to censor ourselves. And we did. There was a lot of stuff that didn't end up in the film because we were careful. And we thought this at least is our pointers to the truth, to what's happening. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, we just kind of really tried to incorporate the truth and, and not censor ourselves that much. I found it interesting that Kevin always refers to himself as an American and he seemed very much like a Caribbean man to me and it never comes up at all. His he culture, refers to himself as an American. American. He's an African American. And he seems like a very Caribbean man too. You know, and he, it seems like he has his own culture and so on and so forth and it never comes up. He never seems to be in conflict or never really talks about it. Yeah, I mean, I think whether he's Caribbean or he's dual citizen also. Oh, I know that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think for him, just being in Iran, um, it didn't matter whether he was Caribbean or American. He was, in everyone's eyes, he was an American, and that was kind of how he went at it. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question about the flat end of the credit roll, where it says there's a special thanks to, I think it was Roger, for the article. Yeah. Right. What is that? So that's Roger uh, Sadara, who's actually an Iranian-American poet. He happens to be the guy who married us. And he's the guy who sent Till the article about the American players in Iran. And that's what sends us on this path. Uh, okay. So, yes. Yes. Um, if you, I guess even, probably eventually there will be a reaching change because the youth in Iran, you know, is what, 45% of the people are under the age of 25 or something like that. But how, like, what did you see, like, the, just the regional attitudes or the familial <laughs> attitudes changing about, okay, like, these girls were just, you know, hanging out in the apartment and they had to really worry that the landlord or the caretaker saw them because then there's all these rumors starting about them. I mean, do you see any of that changing there, or is that just pretty entrenched as a sociological or issue, or the, just the sort of sacrifice of women? Like when they got there, you know, there's 600 channels and 400, 400 of our porno things, but then a girl can't even, you know, go to a guy's apartment and have a soda. <laughs> so, I, I mean, part of the whole issue with this regime is the hypocrisy that comes with it, and I have spent very little time in Iran, so I'm not, I can't really make fair statements about that, but what I will say is that what happens inside is completely different than what happens outside. And you walk into someone's home, most people have booze in their homes. Most people are not wearing their headscarves in their homes. You know, there are, uh, of course, a lot of people that are very religious and that stick to those rules. There's no doubt about that, but I would say that what happens inside is very different from what happens outside. And that's why it's really, that's why so much of this film takes place inside the apartment, because that's where you can sort of have your fun and be yourself. Uh, two real quick questions. I'm assuming that this was a suburb of Tehran, is that correct? This is Shiraz. Which is uh, how so far from the center of Tehran? How far from Tehran? Two hours flight. Two hours? Flight. On a flight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not the same. Okay. Uh, just curious. Yeah. And have you had any a more recent contact with Kevin? You see, see, yeah, Kevin is great. Um, he always comes out, and when we did our premiere in New York and LA, he came out for the premiere. He is retired. Luckily for us, not planning on going back to Iran. <laughs> um, and he runs a um, basketball uh, camp in the U.S. Virgin Islands where he's um, helping disenfranchised youth kind of stay off the streets. So he's really amazing in terms of the way he gives back to his community. Are Americans still recruited for, for Iranian basketball teams? Yeah, they still, they still in a few a year. I haven't been Just paying attention to who, but yeah, they, they're still going. Yeah. Being a uh, loyal American, the, the scene where uh, Elahay's parents said, you know, normally 
guests stay for tea, for food, for not. They kind of ate and left. And my impression was because the next morning was basketball practice, and they don't. They yeah, don't, yeah, exactly. But we didn't. We didn't. Did you explain to them that's when they left? <laughs> I love that you get stuck on this. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's just you know what? I don't want them to think he was an ugly American. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to be to be fair, in the in all of the footage, um, there was a longer version of that scene where Kevin is, you know, somebody teases him and says, "You want to go?" And he's like, "Look, I'm hurt. I'm tired. I get beat up in these games. We have a game tomorrow. I have to rest." But then you got to take some creative license in the editing and make it kind of, you know, <laughs> fun like that. But yes, I mean, they, they understood it. But even though they understood it, she still had that to say about of it. Course. So, the, the, and no, nobody told him to dress a little nicer. Than <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these are the things that struck me. He's a basketball player. That's, you know, like nice t-shirts, nice sneakers. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to thank you uh, for, the, especially the ending. It was really nice to see what he learned and, what, and how he grew. And the comment that he made about how he treats his own uh, lady wife differently and takes sees her in a different light. I thought that was just great. Yeah, I, I don't think the film would have been what it was without his own personal growth. So, I mean, you know, that was, that's, again, one of those things in a documentary where you just keep your fingers crossed. And, There's one here. What, what kind of uh, prospects for dis wider distribution is there for the film? So the question was, what kind of prospects for wider distribution for the film. And um, it's been a really difficult journey getting the film out. Um, it doesn't fit into any compartment. It's not a typical documentary. It's not a comedy. It's a film about Iran, but it's also about basketball. So for distributors, they're like, it doesn't fit into any compartment. So they don't really know what to do with it. Um, we self-distributed it for a while. We did a run in New York and we did a run in LA. And now we're doing sort of <coughs> one piece at a time, like doing a, uh, the screenings here and in some other cities, we're doing festivals. We are talking to a distributor about possibly doing like a semi-theatrical run, but I don't see us being able to get it like in theaters nationwide. It just costs way too much money for advertising <laughs> publicity and either we need like Harvey Weinstein to just have the <laughs> cojones to do it or we just you know we can't and, and these small distributors just can't do things like that so you, you've really got to have a lot of marketing muscle behind it but we're hoping to do a lot of university screenings and community centers and just do a big semi theatrical and just get it in as many places as possible so if you know any churches or community centers or universities that would like to host screenings feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're also selling DVDs back there, so if you want to own one, yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, well, thank you all for coming. Oh, I want to say one thing. We have a, two things, actually. Um, if we do well here again on Tuesday night, then um, maybe Barbara will bring us back. So if you liked the film, please do tell your friends to join us on Tuesday. We have a Facebook page. Like us on Facebook and share our news. You know, word of mouth is the only way we can sort of get what time, things going. What time is the Tuesday night performance? The Tuesday night film is at 8 okay, we will. Um, right here. Thank you. Thank you.